Hope you're tied on because we are off and running on this live Sunday, Mother's Day edition of Gulfstream Today from our third floor clubhouse studios here high above the finish line at Gulfstream Park on this May the 13th. So good to have you with us. Really delighted to have you along for the ride as Ron Nicoletti and Jason Blewett catch up with all of you. And before we go any further, a happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. All the moms out there. I hope you get lots of great presents and have a great lunch or dinner, whatever the case may be. Yeah, Gulfstream Park already buzzing. A sold-out capacity crowd on the second floor of the facility. That is Ten Palms Restaurant overlooking the finish line no better place to watch the races here at Gulfstream Park but they are uh, filled to capacity today I think a lot of families and that was the case up in the Big Apple too a lot of families have these great Mother's Day and Father's Day for that matter traditions spending the day with family and friends at the races nothing better than that now as we focus in on this 11 race card here at Gulfstream Park we are fast and firm we've got an eye on the weather no doubt about that a little muggy outside a little overcast thus far we've sidestepped any sort of significant precipitation and as a result we are fast and firm and we'll give you a little rundown as to what's on tap today beginning in the uh, in the first race a little after 1 15 p.m with that 50 cent early pick five i'll have a ticket coming up in just a couple of minutes race number two our opener today on the turf course is the first super high five on the afternoon and with 11 races ronnie in the mix we'll kick off that rainbow six further down the line in the sixth. Yeah, we're already starting to build that $32,000 plus, and what a great Mother's Day present if you can bring this home and uh, uh, and score this afternoon for only that 20-cent wager. Late pick five as we go full circle. Again, further down the Florida Turnpike and maybe 95 South here in Florida with that 50 cent late pick five on the Sunday action. Mother's Day 2018 at Gulfstream Park. A couple of quick uh, newsworthy items as we uh, settle in for this 11 race extravaganza. The first of which major and it concerns our sister track Pimlico race course up in Baltimore, Maryland. And of course, the Preakness just six days out. And it sounds like the Kentucky Derby runner up Good Magic has got his sights set on justified. I was hoping that happened. Good Magic ran a very, very good race in the Kentucky Derby. Of course, you saw the conditions they had that afternoon. Second to justify. They're going to have that rematch in just, as you said, six days. As champion trainer Chad Brown looks for two straight Preakness wins. Upset Classic Empire and always dreaming a year ago already with cloud computing in the 2017 edition of the second jewel, the Triple Crown, and the Woodlawn Vase, as they say. The priciest trophy in all of sports will be handed out next Saturday with the Preakness. Here at Gulfstream Park, however, we do have the aforementioned 11 races on tap. And just backtracking real fast, Ronnie, to yesterday's action, it was good to see not only an excellent renewal of the big drama late in the day, but it was nice seeing Mr. Jordan finally shed that, that Gulfstream Park bridesmaid status <laughs> that he had had. He's now one for 13 here at GP. <laughs> one for 13 and a really nice uh, ride by Edgar Zayas just to sit off the uh, pace and uh, score at the wire. So very excited for the connection and uh, Eddie Police and the family would just smile ear to ear to finally get that win here at Gulfstream And I'm Park. sure that that horse is almost a, uh, a pet around the barn. Uh, Mr. Jordan's been good for a long time, and Eddie Police has done a nice job from that horse's two-year-old season up through yesterday with that gelding by Cantharos. Now, as we focus in on the early pick five, uh, we do have Armando de Lacerda, who's had himself a fine week here at Gulfstream. His horses have run really well from Thursday up through uh, yesterday. 11th race with Croy uh, earning a 93 buyer was second best behind Mr. Jordan in the big drama and Armando certainly will try to get home a winner and a popular horse and trainer in this early pick five as Armando is putting the saddle and the tack on Dancing Noel who's going to be an overwhelming favorite probably in the neighborhood of three to five or so four to five I, I don't know if you get even money on her today because she's taking a big drop and on that drop she's got early speed she is the anchor I think she's the right horse again at a very prohibitive short price to start the Sunday action and because I singled her I get the spread in the subsequent legs now I've got in race number two. Uh, that's a race where it's just a tricky turf race, Ronnie. It's a solid turf event. There's some drop downs. There's some fillies who have been running at the 12-5 level recently who are in good form. So a three-horse spread. I almost 
singled Gregory Son in the third. Do you like that horse? Yeah, I got that one on top. I thought that was a logical horse, and you've got a little bit of a well, video we'll show you for the horse a little later yeah, on. Yeah, that horse got a great ride. Oh, what a ride from Carlos Montavo last time out in a narrow defeat. And then you've got a key defection of Sweet, Sweet, Sweet in race number four, which leaves us with two very logicals and two two favorites, if you will, and Todd Pletcher's firster by Into Mischief, and Ralph Nix has got a firster in the first career starter for First Crop Stallion Drill. I'm anxious to see how that horse does. And then I think the fifth, and it's rare for me, Ronnie, to go four deep at a race, but that might be the best betting race on the afternoon. Yeah, I mean, we were in sort of agreement with, I have um, four, five, and three, so some of the horses you have up there, and uh, I, I, I think you should have spread in that race. It's pretty good. Yeah, you've got Fashionably Wild on on top, the number four, and I included that horse thinking she might be able to steal away to an uncontested lead beneath jockey Edgar Zayas, and we'll talk about Fashionably Wild, who won't be fashionably late, bit down the line in today's fifth race. So Mother's Day, the opener, a little after 1.15 p.m., and we get back to Dancing Noel here in race number one, dropping, saying, come and catch her, and ultimately, I think, Ronnie, she'll probably break on top and just... Never look back. A little bit of a story on her. She scratched out of a 12-5 condition claimer on Thursday. Now drops to the 6,250 level after dueling early and finishing fourth. As Jason, you just said, facing $16,000 open claimers. It is Armando De La Serta, So they bought, thought this spot was a little better for Dancing Noel than they did on Thursday. Keep in mind, she's a homebred. They, at one time, I'm not sure if Maltese Dog is still standing with Midwest, but a win... A win is a win when you're standing <laughs> your own stallion. So uh, a W uh, will not hurt the stud career Maltese dog, who's actually, and we joke about <laughs> it, and I, he's one of my favorite sort of uh, backyard-type stallions, and I say that with peace and love here in South Florida. He's actually had a decent little run. His horses, I would imagine he moves up the mares that he is bred to to an extent, and I think he's going to get a win, as do you, with Dancing Noel in race number one. In fact, a cold 2-4 exacta for Ronnie and I to start the act. Here's race number two as we head to the turf at seven and a half furlongs. These are three and up Philly Mare, $12,500 claimers. And if you recall the short comment I used with my early pick five play, a ticket in which I used every bit of the five, six, and seven, I do think this is a tricky race and a competitive race where you have horses like Don't Talk Back and Bossiata who have consistent recent form running for that $12,500 claiming price. And then you have a horse like the six, Tapalia, who's taking a pretty significant drop in class, and it's that drop in class that I don't think is suspicious or is any uh, any drop that would give me a, a real big caution flag. I think it's a drop at this stage of the game off a disappointing effort that just makes a lot of sense, and they're setting her up in a race that I think she can win. Well, I was the other way on it. I just didn't like that drop and backed off. I mean, showed the speed last time out, faded against those 25 condition claimers. Horse that I'm going to go back and revisit now that I see you have it on top, but I did hang my hat with the seven Borsiatos making the third start of her current form cycle looking to prove on. A, I thought a really well meant second place finish beating a length at this level and distance last time out. You mentioned don't talk back. That was the way I went in the race and I used Nightstorm. I'm going to go back and look at Tap Lith, or however you say, Tap Lith, however you say the name and use this horse maybe again. All right, Edgar Zayas riding. He is uh, deadlocked in the uh, standings with plenty of racing to go alongside Amisael Jaramillo for fourth with 26 wins apiece, and it's really the four lead dogs between Nick Juarez, Miguel Vasquez, Tyler Gaffleone, and Tyler and, and Miguel both enter the card with 33 wins atop the standings, and all those guys seeing action throughout the next few hours here in Hallandale Beach. Third race on the day, we stay on the turf. We're out to a mile with this $10,000 three-and-up claimer that first and foremost features a four-horse rematch off a race here on April 22nd. It was uh, run fairly early on that card third race in fact and on the surface of an effort will bring you and we have in the red circle the number seven Gregory son highlighted I don't think this son of the late unbridled song could have pulled a better trip or gotten a better ride beneath Carlos Montavo basically sitting the pocket on the rail off a pretty intense speed duel in front of him he makes the first move after coming out from beneath cover he has the lead but in the end he's cut down by street code second best though anyway you slice it though Ronnie perfect trip aside this was a very good turf debut with a horse who again faces three 
out of that same race on April 22nd. But even even being run run down, he beat the rest of them by a good ways. And he got an 81 buyer for that performance that afternoon. So it was a quick race and ran very well. Gregory Sun, of course, as you mentioned, for a debut of performance on the turf. I also used the two Grand Chief you have a little further down. Had trouble at the start in consecutive races, reunited with Tyler Gaffleone, who got him to break sharply to defeat 16 two lifetime claimers. That was back on January 26. He spotted perfectly for this $10,000 tag. But I think the race goes through Gregory Sun. Horse going to be a clear favorite. And again, if you're playing the early pick five and you don't want to put all your eggs in the basket of the big drop down dancing Noel, who's still sitting at one to two with about 51 minutes to post, give or take, Gregory Sun might be the kind of favorite that you anchor and build a foundation around with your early pick five. Or in this case, maybe the early pick four. The horse does look pretty good off a very good, if tough, beat turf debut. Fourth on the afternoon as we switch from the older turf runners right on down to the two-year-old Phillies, and we are left with a field of five, and there were very few scratches on the card today, certainly notable scratches. However, there is an absence here of the number three, Sweet, 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 who, whether you like that Philly or not, Maybe you got a story on the Pletcher first or the Knicks first, or you like one of the other uh, first-time starters in the race. I was anxious to see what the three Sweet 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 was going to do second time out off a pretty tough trip and a really tough break for Patrick being Combe, but that is a moot point. Todd Pletcher, it seems, Ronnie, has sat out the last couple of uh, baby races here in South Florida. Didn't have a firster the other day. Didn't have a first-time starter in the race won by Nacho Papa for Stanley Gold and Arundel on yesterday's card, but he's in the mix here, without a doubt, with the Into Mischief Philly and Make a Little Mischief. Yeah, daughter of Into Mischief, debuting for Todd uh, with Lasix and that typical Pletcher, steady Palm Beach Downs workout pattern showing in preparation for her debut performance. It's Tyler Gaffleone in the saddle, and you'd be uh, goofy if you didn't put a Pletcher horse like this on your ticket somewhere, I think. And I use our prerogative in second, and I see that you did, too. Yeah, our prerogative, I think, from all intents and from what I've seen, this is a, a first-er Philly by Drill, who's going to be pretty live today. And there is a lot to pick apart. I know it's not a, an overflowing field of a dozen two-year-olds, but in the case of our prerogative, do keep in mind, this filly, I guess, has made pretty solid strides from the time she was a real young horse and even went through the auction ring as a yearling for 20000 and was later pinhooked at OBS March of this past of this past March, just a couple of months ago, for, uh, for a decent chunk of change when you consider she sold in that sale for 40 Five thousand more than double her yielding price last fall, and that work looked pretty, uh, pretty athletic and pretty swift. Uh, she went that furlong in ten and one fifth. Now it's kind of cool. She's the first career starter for a new sire in Drill, who was trained by Bob Baffert during his racing days. And the dam on race, this is her third full. There is a half sister who is just one for nine, but she's the lone winner in the family. That sister, however, that lone victory was a two-year-old win on the dirt. So perhaps that'll bode well for. The number four, our prerogative, who again, first starter for drill. It's cool seeing some of these new stallions and what they can do. Obviously, Cajun Breeze, I think, has topped <laughs> all stallions as far as the new faces we've seen thus far here at Gulfstream. Well, listen, man, you had a great bond with Ralph Nix. You're getting Edgar's eyes in the saddle this afternoon. I had a little bit of interest in the horse you have in fourth and third, and that's Capture Your Dreams. Is a daughter of Uncaptured by Lionheart, debuting for Anna Varsi with a really, look at the workout pen. It's pretty solid in the morning. I don't know how this horse is going to run any afternoon. Luca Panici will be in the saddle. I like the workout pattern right over this surface. Right. Three of the five youngsters, and they're all firsters in today's fourth race, have been based and working regularly at Gulfstream Park. So there's no van ride. There's no <laughs> traveling on down the Turnpike or 95 South. And we'll see what they can do in their backyard today as Palm Beach Downs will be the springboard for the Pletcher Firster. On to race number five as we head back to the turf and we break out this field of nine with this three and up Philly a mayor. A non-win is a one optional claimer. And as time has gone on, and I think we've had four summers, perhaps four, maybe five summers of running basically year-round at Gulfstream Park, even in the interim, the 12 months that I moved to Florida, you see this product on a daily basis just strengthening and getting better and better in terms of quality. And some of the mega barns who are leaving horses here basically year-round just talked about the Pletcher Firster in race number four. You've also got a couple of year-plus layoffs from Christophe Clement and Mark Cassie in Sunday's fifth race. Who do you like here? I went with the four fast and be wild on top. Should be primed and ready to score after returning from the layoff. Went up, set the pace, and finished the 
solid second at this level and distance. Angel Penna Jr. is the trainer. And Edgar Zayas, I like him when he's on a horse that's got the speed. And I think this horse will be the right one. I mean, I'm looking up here. We got uh, sort of a dissimilar horses on the first three in there. And I know that you had the five horse on top of your ticket. Yes, that is the, the number five, Barika. A couple of New York breads, a couple of old friends of mine from the Big Apple running today, at least early on on this Mother's Day at GP. I like Tapaliath in uh, race number two for Jose Pynchon, and I think Barika will run very well, and uh, maybe in 2020 hindsight, she was a little over bet in that debut for Armando de la Cerda here at 7 of 5 towards the end of April, but as we go back and look at that race, I think you're going to see a filly who just did not have an easy time, nor did she have the necessary race flow to set up her closing kick from the back. We had had her highlighted in the red circle. She's got the uh, hunter green sleeves and the black silks on a Midwest, and she's just in an uncomfortable spot at this point, jammed up between horses, and with the number four Admiral's win directly in front of her, there's just no way she can switch out from that cover to get clear to make her rally. Also note, the winner of this race, who got an amazing ride, and Nick Juarez was the difference on the 7-1 upset winner, Dark Artist, she wound up loose on the lead, walked on the front end, set a very slow pace, and I think, considering nobody really gained any significant ground behind that slow-paced winner, it was a good effort in defeat for the 5 Barica, and I think she'll put it together today. And you clearly like her second time over this track for Amanda. Yeah, yeah and she's going to sit the trip. It looks like there's enough pace. She likes to do her running, best run running from a stock closed position. As you saw there, she's making a second start since arriving from New York. And I think she's a logical choice in that race. And I think she sits, as I picked the speed, maybe she sits right off that speed and scores in here. 400 day plus layoffs for Mark Cassie and Christoph Coman. Uh, Mark's filly, the uh, the dream ahead filly named Juness Adore has not run in about 500 days. She's a former uh, Keeneland maiden turf winner. And then we have the Clement trained homebred by Gio Ponti for Castle and Lions in the number three Ponty scheme, who going back to her debut about 14 and a half months ago at Tampa Bay Downs, she was determined, she was professional, and she was very resolute in that slim head victory. However, the hurdles are not insignificant today as she not only faces a field that is, you know, bulky in, in the numbers department, this is a very competitive race where she clearly spots a lot of recent form. She's been really training nicely up at Pace and Park and that's a deeper surface. So I think she's going to be ready to run. I want to show you a stat. On Christophe Clement, layoff 180 day plus with a maiden winner last time out on the turf. He's 5 for 16. That's 31%. He's in the money 56% of the time and has a positive return of investment of $2.13. So he knows how to get these horses ready to run after an extended layoff, especially with a maiden winner last time out. Albeit it was at Tampa, but I like the workout pattern at Payson Park. Yeah, this horse wound up beating a next out winner on the Keeneland a turf in secede and we'll see how Kristoff and Nick Juarez do teaming up with Ponty scheme I would note on the turf with a year plus more between starts the barn just two for 21 so we'll see which numbers work out for Ponty scheme who's going to need a good effort against the solid field as we cash out that early pick five and on this Mother's Day set our sights on a life-changing score mega score in the rainbow six on the other side of this quick timeout. At Express Bet, we celebrate the champions that make horse racing great. That's why we provide more ways to bet from more places than ever. We've built an entire family of brands to give players more of the rewards they deserve, give bettors the information they need to win, and provide a community for horse bettors. Because the best way to support the champions of horse racing is to champion horse racing. Express Bet, we are racing.
little over a week since Go Zapper made a name for himself or continue to make a name for himself as a stallion standing along his son. Awesome again at Adina Springs. Damn sire of Justify, the Kentucky Derby winner. Damn sire of American Gal who won a grade one. Go Zapper, a monster horse. And we've got some maidens, Ronnie, as a, we give you a hearty welcome back if you're just joining us on this live Sunday edition of Gulfstream today from our clubhouse studios. We are fast and firm, a little overcast outside. And what are you doing in the rainbow? I'll show you my rainbow six ticket here, $43.20. But I want to talk about a horse in the ninth race. That's the number two. That's my long shot today. And it's the number two, unstable in the morning. 20 to one on the morning line. This one is dropping into the claiming ranks. Fake stakes competition. You got to look at that horse when you're putting your ticket together. You might want to add it a little later on. And of course, uh, in the last race, a little bit of a hunch play with the 10 horse Mama Tries on Mother's Day. All right, that'd be nice if Mama Tries <laughs> gets it done. And your Sunday night caps of 43.20 with 32 G's plus in that Rainbow Six carryover. Now, we may be dealing with a real favorite in the opening leg of Sunday's Rainbow. By the way, the opening leg is a $16,000 three and up made in claimer on the dirt with a field of seven, and that's the number eight Darwish, who on paper almost looks too good to be true, where this horse ran so well first time out, and I do like the fact that Gilberto Zerpa debuted this horse for 12-5, yet is bumping him up ever so slightly to 16. Yeah, an ideal spot, too, to step up the competition after that promising 12-5 debut in which he dueled throughout and he was beating the neck when finishing second. That was going five and one half furlongs. Want to show you a stat on Mr. Gilberto Zerpa over the last five years. Second career starts, maiden claiming horses on the dirty solid four for 20, 20 percent. He's in the money 50 percent of the time, almost that two dollar return investment. He just does an excellent job and this one is certainly the one to beat. Very low on the morning line, I believe like six to five or yeah, something. Yeah, just like above that. even money mm -hmm. and I think legitimately so. Horse going to be a big favorite and might just with that early speed blast off and never look back for the boys from Venezuela. Moving on to race number seven, five more to go on this Sunday, May 13th and the late pick five. We hit it yesterday for about 230 bucks, give or take. Not bad. We'll take it. A big thank you to the uh, single Browns Gap, who once again just hit so hard for that 6250 uh, claiming price. He was a, a popular winner at around three to five or so in leg number two. So let's get lucky today here at GP as my late pick five, much like the early pick five, clocks in at $24 for 50 cents and down the line in race number eight I am going to single the number five secret pleasure who's really got a similar look I think to digits who won on a big drop yesterday for trainer Marcus Vitale I get digits wasn't off the claim like secret pleasure is and I don't entirely love the drop from a quarter to 16 but still the perfect spot for secret pleasure to break her maiden and the remaining races i have uh, i have some coverage including a four bagger in race number 11 someone's going to get their picture taken there someone <laughs> is actually going to break their maiden with peace and love in sunday's nightcap i like the two favorites in the 10th i think both ralph nix and arby mirage's fillies are going to sit the trip at a race where there's some some quick speeds but speeds that may quite simply just tire themselves out and I used your long shot, Ronnie, on the ticket in race number nine, unstable in the morning. I, I just, I'm not ignoring any horse coming out for a barn that's over 40% this meet with trainer Oscar Gonzalez. And this horse was, as I mentioned a little early, was in stakes competition all throughout two, 2017. In a good spot today. We'll see if that one, if it's going to be 21, but I'm glad you added on the ticket. It makes me feel good. All right. The pace between in this opening leg of the Sunday Elite pick five between the six hidden to win and the seven Luna Lanita I think is the biggest key race uh, plot line in this race uh, a hidden to win has got that high cruising speed she's won her last couple of races on the dirt and Luna Lanita might be just every bit as fast as her and she's won her last two starts on the dirt by a combined 17 lengths there's no denying though the recent form that hidden to win has been in and she's been able to take that intense pace pressure and she's been able to kick clear and that was the case last time out on April 20th for trainer Angel Kiros where hidden to win was a big favorite at three to two set the pace had a little pressure around the far turn 
but did her thing through the stretch. I was against her on this day. I thought maybe her win two back, again, stretching out at a mile on the dirt, was a little fluky at 6-1, to one, and she proved me wrong. I like the fact that she can handle pressure, but again, should be an interesting cat and mouse game early on. The break and that backstretch run in the first furlong or so will be very key, very pivotal between the six hidden to win and the seven, Luna Lunita. And with that said, I went with the three horse in here who I think is going to sit that trip that does the best running from that stalking position. She sits behind that speed duel, as you just mentioned, between hidden to win and Luna Lunita. Victor Barboza Jr. has the apprentice. Raylu Gutierrez has been riding in great form, and that's how I saw the race play out. I saw the same thing you did with uh, hidden to win and Luna Luita, and I mm -hmm. just thought maybe the three flying girl sits that trip, getting in with a little uh, apprentice uh, weight allowance, and maybe that's the one to get there. I'm glad you used it on your ticket. And that, and, and that was my thought process, just a, a trip handicapping angle in here. Yeah, it does seem like Flying Girl perhaps was taken a bit out of her game last time out. She was the one that tried to force Hidden to win. There was right. no other speed right. in the race, and she weakened. And Beauty of a Day, who's in this race as well, and May, when it comes down to what have the best closing kick, was able to pick her off late. So an interesting rematch, and again, the pace should be very telling early on in Sunday's seventh race. Let's move on to the eighth this afternoon. Sunday's eighth, we cut back, but we stay on the dirt. Listed as fast. These are three and up. Philly Amare, $16,000 made in claimers, and I gave it away who I like in this race and who I think will will promptly score as a short price maiden winner. The number five secret pleasure, who previous connections tried her in special weight company. They tried her going long. Didn't break her maiden. Do I love the fact that Marcus Vitale took her for 25 and she's immediately in for 16? I don't. But if she wins today and somebody says they want her for 16K, current connections make a few thousand and they win a race. I'm hoping that is part of the equation this afternoon. Yeah, and I knew she was going to be the big favorite. And then I did put her on top of the ticket. But I was afraid for all the reasons you mentioned. You know, Marcus Vidali got Nick Juarez handling the combo, drop down, to turn back. But not a move that they do a lot. It's not something like you would see with another bomb where they claim for 25. They just want to win. Put them in for 16. All that said, the one to be. Yeah, absolutely. We saw it with digits. Now, albeit it wasn't first off the claim, but I think they said yesterday, look, paid too much for this horse. They dropped digits in for 10. He had the full cup blinkers on, lefty and righty, and psh, right to the lead <laughs> and never looked back. That may happen today at a short price with the five secret pleasure. So you do have a drop with the horse who's going to be a very prohibitive favorite. Who's the main danger? I use Lucille Bull in seconds, dropping a notch, turning back to three quarters of a mile, stalk the pace, finish. I thought a good second against 20 maidens. That was that contested at seven furlongs. I think this horse is a bit of a price on the ticket, and I didn't think this horse ran badly at all last time out. I I mean, the race goes through a secret pleasure, but Lucille Bull and maybe Grand Event Aventura uh, can grab minor shares in here at a, at a square price. Yeah, much higher prices than the favorite, the gray filly by Old Fashion in race number eight. As we flip the page, we're on to uh, race number nine. Final pick three down the uh, card today. We'll get underway with this twenty-five dollars to $20,000 claiming race, and these are three and up fillies and mares. I looked at this race almost two ways. Either Queen Jill, the eight, who's a uh, lukewarm, I think, three to one morning line favorite. She's going to be, she's the horse to beat. And at the end of this race, she might just be a, a, a slight cut, a narrow cut above and a little faster than the competition. If that isn't the case, and with the drop, the white hot connections, the good post, you get a big effort out of the number two unstable in the morning. This is a horse I thought could upset. And obviously, we both got her on top. And good luck. Good luck getting that 20 to one. Yeah, I don't uh, think it's going to happen. Well, uh, you you know, I just thought because as I remember this horse breaking its maiden first time out last July in the turf and from then stakes races, as I mentioned a little earlier, all through its 2017 campaign, then finished at eighth. But that was a three of allowance level horses that this horse was facing. You mentioned the connection to Oscar Gonzalez, just been on fire. Miguel Vasquez handling the drop down into the claiming ranks. This is the spot. Hoping we get some kind of price in here. I don't think this horse will be the favorite, but it's happened in the past. You're not as bullish on the eight. Queen Jill as I am, are you? No, I backed off that horse. I ended it fourth after I went back and looked a couple of times. I was just so enamored. I thought I found the angle of angles with the number two un uh, uh, unstable in the morning and added Maddie Saltz in second, who you have in third, Elizabeth Vowen. I'm a little bit afraid of the eight horse in there, but uh, I, I, that's the way I saw the race play out. Yeah, perhaps uh, what, what cold watered you on Queen Jill, in, in a way, she was a maiden for a long time. She really had a little bit of that bridesmaid uh, 
flavor going on. I know she's just one for 15, but again, the drop to 25, I just could not ignore. And Maddie Salsa's got some early speed, makes some sense. I'd imagine the pace might be a bit of Maddie Salsa, the number four. She's a great one, and I think you're going to get an up-close good trip ride beneath Jaramillo on the number eight, Queen Jill. But let's try to shake it up with Oscar Gonzalez, the OG in race number nine there with Unstable in the morning. Race number 10 will uh, bring down the curtain on the main track. Our final dirt race of the weekend and on this Mother's Day is a six furlong and rightfully so. Philly and Mayor, now one is a one $25,000 optional claimer. And if you recall with my late pick five play, I said I feel as though the Knicks Philly Sweet Parang and uh, Boogie Mirage's horse on the outside, the Seven Worth Avenue, they'll be the first two betting choices. Not only do they have a potential talent edge between them uh, against everybody else, I think they're both going to get dream trips with the four first distinction and the five true motion who are both runoff, need-to-lead type sprinters. I think they're going to hook, and then you've got the two favorites up close just licking their chops, ready to roll. I see it almost that way, but the horse you have in third I have on top, Sean's idea, drop into the 25 level today, following that second-place finish against a 35 starter allowance runners with a solid fourth. That was a strong group of $75,000 optional claimers last time out. Just read through the past performances who this horse has been facing. It's not a top barn where you jump off the page I just think this might be the horse in here that I can get a little bit of a price. Made it my best bet of the afternoon. Oh, wow. I'll have Sweet Parang on the ticket in Worth Avenue. Sweet Parang, I'm going to show you a stat on Ralph Nix. Third start back from a layoff in sprints right here at Gulfstream Park. He is solid. He's 11 for 39, 28%. 59% of the money, that $1.32 return of investment. But uh, I, that was my thought process in this. Sean's idea, just looking who this horse has been facing. I figured I'd put it on top, and uh, I'm going to use Sweet Parang and Worth Avenue underneath. Yeah. All right, sounds good. All three of them, again, likely to get a torrid pace to close into. Race number 11 caps the action here at Gulfstream Park as we end the week. With the seven and a half furlong, twelve thousand five hundred dollar maiden claimer for three and up, Phillies and mares, work my way through this race from front to back, back to front. I think you need coverage. Just there's nobody that really has that sort of defining, even for a maiden 12-5 race on the turf. Nobody really has any great turf form consistently. So that led me into the uh, direction, and I don't like the post, but the 12 Grantastic News, my thinking was and is, well, the effort two back for 20 was okay, and this horse last time out, relatively speaking, actually ran pretty well against a comparable crew in a race, dare I say, was a little deeper than this 11th. Yeah, and, I, and Jane Sibeli and Nick War is negotiating outside so Joyce it the same way, and we both have the number 10 Mama Tries, as you mentioned, the hunch play of the day today. A good second on the turf, a couple of starts back, trying the lawn again, finishing third. That was a race move from seven and a half furlongs on the grass to seven furlongs on the fast main track that afternoon. I just thought those were the logical uh, two, and I threw in Normal, uh, uh, the number one horse in third. Yeah, normal sinus. Yeah, I looked down. I have sinus. I said, well, that, that can't be the name, and of course it is. That is some name <laughs> for that Philly by Turbo Compressor. And I'll tell you, Francisco Masonette. He's got a live horse here. One of the more liver horses. I think you'll see him on in the eight subtle grace. Who's got the low profile jock. <laughs> That horse got a big chance, right? Yeah, you see him. I got him on my ticket for the Supra. And you're right. You was good. This is a wide open affair. That outside post, you know, sometimes you get lucky. You get that great early position, but it's tough to do it. But you got a rider that's certainly good at doing that, and it's Nick Juarez. So, fresh slate for everybody today. 11 races on the Sunday card. Ronnie and I, throughout the afternoon with you from our paddock set studios down right outside the walking ring. And of course, on this Mother's Day, we got to bring on Pete Aiello, the voice of Gulfstream Park for those scratches and changes. He's up in just a few moments.